Uh, we are interviewing uh, at Off the Block Blog with uh, Pepperdine uh, head men's volleyball coach uh, David Hunt, who also is the head coach for the uh, USA men's team and the Pan Am Cup. So, uh, Coach Hunt, uh, first off, how did you uh, and the team prepare for the Cup? How did I what? I'm sorry. How, how did you and the team prepare for the the Cup? Ooh, yeah, there's, there's been a steady group of guys that's been training in Anaheim all summer. Uh, so a lot of them have, have been in the pipeline. I think John's had, um, I'd probably say 80% of those guys, you know, for maybe the last few summers in the gym. Um, and then a few guys added, uh, when they finished school or some of the guys are currently in school. So they were able to come when they had a little bit of off time. Um, but, We've been just training as a group, uh, sort of like with this, say, 19 guys that were in contention for the roster for about two and a half weeks now. So I'd uh, say so for the last two and a half weeks, we have been getting after it in terms of knowing uh, these are the guys that we want to take and we're evaluating and our staff is with them. And, um, so, yeah, that's a long-winded answer to sort of, <laughs> Talk about the roster that we have now at 14. Oh, we'll get more into uh, the players specifically and uh, also your um, your uh, conversations with Coach Spira, but uh, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, the Cup. Uh, it's been six years since the uh, USA has won the Cup. Uh, what is the biggest challenge, and uh, how do you overcome that challenge this time around? You know, yeah, no, I haven't been there yet. Um, on the men's side, I was there on the women's side. So John Hawks, who's helping coach this group, he was there in 2009, 2010, I think he said. Um, so he's been really valuable to have uh, in terms of bouncing ideas off of, not just because of his volleyball knowledge, but also his knowledge of the tournament. Um, Rob Nielsen, who was the head coach of the group last year, um, has been in the gym, obviously, with the World Championship group, so it's been good to see him and pick his brain a little bit. and um, So I have a general idea of what what we might see and might expect, but um, a lot of unknowns right now. So we're actually, we're digging up some rosters of teams that are in our pool. They are just online uh, earlier today trying to figure it all out and see who might be, be bringing who. I was going to ask you about uh, the teams in your uh... – in your pool, is there anything that you can tell us other than what you gleamed off the roster? Uh, you know, I've been talking to Maurice Torres, who's going to play for Puerto Rico. I've been trying to uh, pick his brain a little bit because he's on the Puerto Rican roster, but uh, he's playing it pretty close to the vest, uh, so <laughs> I can't get too much out of him. And our uh, a group of guys went down and played Argentina uh, earlier this month. So uh, I was trying to cross-reference and see who was going to be playing for them, but uh, not too much stuff, yeah. Uh, what would you consider a, a successful tournament, and what do you personally hope to get out of this experience and hope that the players get out of this tournament? Um, yeah, I don't know. A successful tournament, I'm, I'm not quite sure, because we're, every day we talk about something, and these guys have been great at implementing it in and put it into effect. Um, so successful tournament is just if we can continue that growth arc and uh, continue our learning and development. Um, a lot of these guys are guys that just haven't had a ton of match time yet um, at the international level. So uh, if we can learn uh, some things about those guys and make John's job easier in years down the road uh, when he has to make decisions about uh, major tournament rosters, I think that would probably be successful, but I don't know if, if we'll be feeling that right now or, you know, in a few weeks. I think that's sort of long-term. Correct me, as let's talk about your, the players on your on your team. I believe, looking at the past schedules, that there's only one player that you have not coached or coached against. That would be uh, Ryan uh, Kanan, Conan of uh, Lewis. Is that correct? You know what? I coached against him uh, two years ago when we went oh. out and played Lewis. 
So um, you've coached you against. Can. So you coached. I think North everybody. Raven. Yeah. Right. Wow. So what? Yeah. What uh, uh, advantage does that give you to coach uh, ha- or have coached or coached against these pl- all these players? Um. Yeah, it's just it's really fun. Me and Hawks, you know, at least once or twice a practice when we're walk- walking around. Um, say, man, it's really nice to have that on our side now, you know, and uh, <laughs> you see these guys for four, I mean, some of those guys you've seen for, you know, six or eight years, right, through the recruiting process and then through their college careers, and uh, you're just, you're really aware of what they can do, right, and what they can do at a high level, so um, we have high standards for all of them because we've seen them all do great things for their college programs across the country. So uh, it's nice to, to be able to have them on our side of the net finally, which is it's a pretty cool experience. And if I'm not mistaken, you have three active players on your r- roster, uh, Ryan, as well as uh, obviously Davidson, your gym all the time, and uh, Kyle D'Agostino up on the farm. Um, how much of a learning curve is it for those players that are still in college? Um, and versus uh, and how did they come up to speed uh, playing international matches like these? Yeah, I mean, with uh, Dave, he was in uh, the gym a little bit last summer, so I think it's been nice for him to have that year already under his belt. He was at the tournament last year. Um, Ryan just joined us a few weeks ago, and he was on a foreign tour with Lewis, so he didn't miss a beat. He got in the gym, and he's He's used to playing high-level volleyball, not only for being at Lewis, but from their uh, foreign tour. And then Kyle, Kyle is a young guy, but I think he's, you know, an old guy at heart in terms of he's grown up around volleyball. His parents uh, have been involved in volleyball for years, coaching and uh, running a club that he was uh, playing for. So uh, even though he age-wise is pretty young, his volleyball IQ and experience are pretty impressive. So, um all of those guys, as with everybody on the roster, you know, deserves to be there. Um, and that's not just physically with what we think that they can do down the road, but also just their mental ability and their their volleyball acumen, I guess it would be. All right. You know that I can't uh, have an uh, interview with uh, you without asking a silly question. Is Kyle D'Agostino really five foot nine? Ooh, I have no idea. Both me and him feel really short, I think, uh, with this roster. This roster seems exceptionally tall. Uh, so, I, you know, it's, I have no idea. All right. I'm going to not accept that question and ask you another silly question. Better look, Price Charming stash or Mitch Stahl's beard? You know, I don't think Price has the stash going on anymore. Um, what? He, he looks clean cut. Yeah, he looks clean cut, and he's ready to go. Um, but Kyle Russell's got a pretty disgusting looking thing on his face right now, and uh, Mitch has trimmed up his beard a little bit. I was watching last year's Pan Am Cup video, and his beard was definitely a lot longer, uh, so it's a little bit more uh, under control. But I'm just jealous because I I can't grow anything on my face. So uh, kudos to those guys. All right, let's uh, talk a little bit more, uh, more seriously about your players. Um, Jonas Safe uh, was uh, is your captain. Is that a um, your decision or is that a team vote? No, that was uh, I'd probably say our decision. Staff. Um, he's a veteran guy. He was there last year. I'm not sure if he was the captain last year or not, but um, he's been in the gym all summer. The conversations that Jonas having. Uh, with the other players and sort of instigating some some good talk uh, just about volleyball, right? And when we sit down as a group and try to sort some things out offensively, defensively, or um, try to implement, you know, what the guys on the World Championship roster are doing, Jonah's a great um, ambassador for that and just takes guys under his wing and shows them the way it should be done, not just uh, with his actions, but also – uh, by having the right conversation. So he, I don't think it was maybe a decision by the staff per se. It was just, hey, that's the guy, and we all know. 
Well, speaking of Jonah, um, between him and uh, uh, Shane Shaw, you, I would say that uh, – would you say uh, also agree that the uh, center position is uh, the biggest strength of uh, your team right now? Ooh, I don't – I don't know if it's the biggest strength. I think we depth the, the amount of depth that we have is sort of silly. Um, we in James, Jonah, and then we had Michael Saeda on the roster. Um, you know, we had the three probably most active setters in NCAA history. I mean, they probably combined for a thousand kills themselves. Um, so we definitely have an active group of setters in the gym, but, uh, yeah. I, it's one of many strengths of our team, I think, the setting position. Oh, you, know, you forgot uh, the other person that would probably be up there would be uh, for, uh, Jenny Francisco, but she was pretty active in his own right, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not just active. He's just straight physical, I think, is, is the term that I would use for him. <laughs> uh, let's go down into uh, coaching. You talked about uh, the dialogue that you had with uh, Coach Spira. Um, can you tell us more about the conversations that you've had and uh, what um, directive he has for you in terms of what he hopes to uh, get out of um, the of this team and this event um, and how that will uh, benefit the men's national team on a macro level? Yeah, yeah. So John, John's extremely busy with lots of things, right? He's uh, not only is he prepping for world champs, but, you know, he's uh, on the forefront of trying to get men's volleyball to grow uh, in our country. So he's doing lots of things. So our conversations, it's really me just trying to soak it in and soak in sort of what his vision is for the program. And he can clearly articulate his vision, uh, not only uh, physically, but then culturally for the guys, the team, the entire program. So uh, that guides me and John Hawks' conversations really easily. And, um, you know, John Hawks is a veteran coach himself, not just uh, knowing John, but uh, also in the USA program. So the combination of those two guys, uh, I think, sort of, it's not even a decision-making process, really. It's just, hey, here's it's pretty clear cut um, what's going to benefit USA Volleyball in the future. And so our roster is is formed with definitely the future in mind. How, how, how much input has uh, John had in terms of uh, um, deciding a uh, playing time, or is that really up to you, Greg, and, uh, and Hawks? No, yeah, he's given us a lot of the latitude uh, – make those decisions. He's, he's given me, um, in my conversations with him, uh, incredible latitude to do what I need to be successful, but also has given me, like I said, that sort of parameters on, hey, here's the, the culture that I see, here's what I see for the men's national team. So it's, it's pretty impressive to, I mean, he's been doing it for, for many years, his involvement with the U.S. team, obviously, as an assistant now as the head coach. So, um, yeah, he's given me a lot of latitude uh, to make those decisions. Uh, you really have been blessed with uh, great mentors. Well, John has obviously um, been – you uh, detailed that uh, just right now, but also we all know that Marv has been a huge mentor in your life. Um, has, has he uh, had any, any uh, influence in – preparing you specifically for this event? You're talking about Mars? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you you know better than anybody. Probably everything that I do, he's had an influence over it, right? Um, yeah. But I think uh, after my experience in 2016 at the Olympics, it became pretty clear why Mar values the things that he does, um, both in athletes and in training. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if he's, you know, necessarily, you know, shaped me to coach a Pan Am Cup team or something, but um, I think the principles that maybe he values in coaching and in athletes uh, transcends the level of volleyball, and it's 
it's on a higher scale of just elite athletes, right? What makes elite athletes? And I think that's the unique thing about Mars and she can connect with all different types of athletes, but everything is based around working with the elite ones. And uh, last question, you uh, spoke glowingly over the about uh, Hawks, but you have another uh, assistant uh, helping you, Greg Walker, who just announced uh, last month that uh, he's joined uh, USC as a, the, their new assistant coach. Um, can you tell us about uh, your experience with him and what uh, Greg brings to the table, not just uh, for the Pan Am Cup, but also uh, for uh, USC? Yeah, you know what? I actually, I haven't been in the gym with Greg that long. He's only been here about a day and a half for us. He was a late addition. Uh, we had somebody drop out, and Greg was willing to step in, and Jeff was kind enough to let Greg join us, you know, after he just got to USC. So uh, it's a huge thanks to Greg and Jeff for doing that. But, uh, you know, he, I mean, I think it's pretty well-known. Maybe it's well-known. Uh, what he's done internationally with our sitting team. And uh, I think he has, he definitely has an energy and a passion about volleyball when I talk to him, but I've talked to him uh, recruiting wise over the last few years. So um, I'm excited, one, to be around him as a person for the next few weeks, uh, and then to hear his thoughts about the game, his thought about, thoughts about the team, because now he's going to view these guys through just a fresh lens where, uh, me and Hawks have been in the gym for a few weeks with these guys, so we sort of know where they're at, or you've sort of seen, you know, areas that they're working on. Maybe they're not uh, so clean at it or so good at it yet. Um, now Greg can be able to come in with a fresh pair of eyes and uh, maybe remind us of some of the good things that we're doing or just give us a fresh perspective. So um, I'm excited about that, but uh, just as a person, I'm excited to be around him for the next few weeks. Well, I've uh, taken up enough of your time. Uh, thank you for uh, taking time out of your very busy schedule to uh, discuss the yeah, upcoming Pan Am Cup uh, uh, tournament, and uh, we wish you and the team uh, the best of luck. All right. Thanks, Sean.